Welcome back to another episode of the Carter Cast. I'm your host, Carter Bond. With me, as always, Dylan Connor, college football playoff prediction show. Here we go. It's going to be a quick pod today. We'll get right into it. Download the SeatGeek app or go to SeatGeek.com because we're brought to you by SeatGeek. Use code CarterCast, $20 off your first purchase, $50 minimum purchase required. Terms and conditions apply. Use code CarterCast at SeatGeek, first purchase today. Let's get into the show today. College football playoff predictions. It's going to be a quick show. Like I mentioned, we're going to do Heisman predictions, and uh, we'll go through our brackets a little bit, not fully first round and whatnot. We'll give our final four and our national champion and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, let's do it. I'll start off real quick just talking about the playoff in general. This is so awesome. This is so Mm -hmm. awesome. People are complaining where, oh, the top four. I don't like the top four teams in the playoff. I don't don't like four teams. Oh, maybe it should have just been six. Why not 12? Why not 12? And people say, oh, well, this group of five team or this 11 seed shouldn't even have a chance at the national title. They still have to win four games, four football games to win a national title. They'll have to travel on the road. Life is hell for those teams at – Eight, nine, ten, eleven, or nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Those last four mm-hmm. teams, they're going to have to travel. It's going to be very hard for them to win. Connor, I'll start with you. Do you actually think that the twelve-team playoff diminishes the regular season? Because I think the opposite. No, I don't. And I think people that are up in arms about it are people that hate fun, people yep. that like to gatekeep stuff. Where it's like, hey, do you plop down in March and get so excited for March Madness and you sit in front of your TV for 12 hours on that first Thursday and Friday? What excites you the most? When a double-digit seed upsets one of the top seeds, that excites you. But all of a sudden in college football, we don't give teams that same chance. If Liberty or Boise or whoever runs the table, they should have a chance. They might get stomped in round one. They could. They very well could as the last seed. There's three other first-round games. The rest of the games will be awesome. They deserve a chance because that one year every seven or eight years where a group of five team or a low team does make a run will be electric. We'll talk about that in sports history forever. I think this setup is beautiful. I was a little hesitant at first, but the more the merrier. I really do believe that, and this is good for the game as far as fun, viewership, gets more fan bases involved. First round, the college is hosting. Love that wrinkle. I think overall this is great. And I don't think it'll take that long for people to adjust. Give it one or two years. Wait till the first electric playoff. And it's not going to diminish the regular season, too. I think it only makes it better because I I think it's a stupid point where, okay, one loss and you're done. Like, and you know, you lose first game of the season. There's a real good chance you're not making the playoff in a 14 playoff. Mm -hmm. Now you lose Mm -hmm. in the beginning. And I think fans are going to take a while to understand that as, oh, my team lost two games this season. We're cooked, but. Losing two games in a Power 5 league like the SEC or Big Ten isn't the end of the world. You're actually a really good team, and you're going to make the playoff at that point. So there's that, but also it's not going to diminish the regular season because it makes more games matter. The 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, the bracketology of it all come late November is going to be phenomenal and electric. You're going to tune into eight more games than you typically would have come late November because Mm -hmm. there's going to be real implications now rather than, oh, Michigan-Ohio State, that's the only game that matters for the playoff because we kind of know the rest. We have so many more games that matter, and I think that's great for college football. Dylan? You have more games that matter, and you don't lose any games that matter either. I feel like a lot of people had concerns about the rivalry games at the end won't matter because if teams have locked up a playoff spot, what's the point of of putting out your best play? Like, you're already in the playoffs. But – there are incentives within being the top 12 that the teams play for. If you're one of the top four, if you win the conference, you get a bye. If you are the high, I guess, technically lower seed in the first round, you get to play at home. That's huge. That's something that teams are going to want to play for. And then you have those brink of the edge, 15 to 10 teams at the end of the season that are going to be playing for those last few spots. Now, I don't think we we had the Florida State conversation last year, right? Teams getting left off. Yeah. That is that is as long as we have a committee selecting, that will always be an issue. And I think you can just chalk that up to college football. But Connor, what you said exactly, the people that hate this just hate fun. You can throw that on a quote card. If you hate the expanded college football playoff, you hate fun. I agree. I I, I agree with you there. Talking about Florida State getting snubbed and how the committee will mess it up. I, the problem is now if the 11 seed or 10 seed gets left off, you know, a potential, they're like the 13th or 14th, if they get snubbed or left off, I don't really feel as bad because guess what? You're the 10 or 11. Florida State goes undefeated and wins their conference and does everything in their power possible to get there. 
they should have deserved a chance to play for a national title. That's where I have that yeah. issue, but I think it's different because if a team gets snubbed at 13-14, sure, they may have deserved to get in over a certain team or whatever, but I'm not really going to care as much because you kind of don't – like it really doesn't matter as much because you still lost a couple games. Some teams might be 9-3 and three getting into the playoff at some point during this 12-team playoff. Yeah. And then last thing I wanted to touch on before we get into our predictions – I think it's an absolute joke that the quarterfinals is is at neutral sites. This should be at campuses yeah. too. The final four neutral sites fine. National title neutral site. Quarterfinals and then the opening first round games should all be at campuses. I think that's insane. I think it's ridiculous. I think it has to be at campuses. You're forgetting a, the, the number one driving factor, which is money. I you think the Peach Bowl I, I, and the Sugar Bowl are going to allow that? There's no way. I understand that. I understand that. Like, I understand money, and I, I'm not I'm not naive to that, but I still think it's insane, and I still think the product would be so much better if it was at quarterfinals. And I, no one's going to argue against me for that, other than nah. for the sake of money. But you guys want to do predictions? Let's do it. All right. Well, let's do it. Go, I, I wanted to say, ahead. yeah, real quick on that, I agree with you, and I think fan bases will see that. Like, it would be awesome if Georgia – or Oregon or whoever's the top four seed got to host a game. Like, why does their why do their fan bases and campuses have to miss out on that because they were better? I think that's yeah. the underlying point. And the other thing too is if you're let's say you're a Georgia fan, and okay, your team's playing in uh, Los Angeles in the Rose Bowl. Yeah, you're like, mm, I don't want to travel to the Rose Bowl for a quarterfinal game. And then you're playing in Houston in the semifinal game. You're like, eh, I might just wait until the national title game. You're spending thousands and tens of thousands of dollars if you wanted to travel to all three of these mm-hmm. games yeah i completely agree with that and it, it sucks because a team like georgia there's a good chance they're in the top four for the next five six seven years like they might not fall off at all so then all of a sudden these fans are like well we haven't got to host a game since this expanded playoff started but yet these lower teams get one on their campus and the atmosphere and the local business gets brought in i think something's gonna have to change i do i don't know how that works with the, the sugar bowl and the rose bowl and whatever in the quarterfinals but you're right, Carter. I think having those quarterfinal games on campus would just be would be better all around product. I, I do yeah. think so. A hundred percent. Do you do you think which one outweighs the other? Getting to play a game at home, you know, make the college a little more money, or getting the buy? That's such oh. a good question. I think it depends on the program because let's say you're a program that's not used to being there in the playoff. Getting that game on campus, I think, matters even more than the buy. I think there's some situations where that applies. But I also think this is a tool that the NCAA can use where if they want to up the incentive for any reason to be a top four, they can say, oh, well, you get to host you get to host your games. But I don't think right now we're at the point to where that's needed. The buy is yeah. just enough right now. And this is – I think it's important to remember, too, we don't have to harp too long on this. It's still kind of experimental. We're, I'm sure there will be some tweaks here and there to how the format is. It, we're in the yeah. first years, and but very excited. I don't worry about blowouts because I still love watching the sport. I think that's a common a common gripe is if you have Boise State playing Oregon or whatever, like it's going to be a blowout. I don't care. I get to watch football for another week. And it but doesn't shorten the, the regular season. On the off chance that Boise upsets them once every seven or eight years that group of five team wins, it makes it all worth it. That's going to be such 100%. a moment in sports that we talk about forever. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Also, it's brutal, brutal for uh, if you know in laws and you know that kind of stuff mm. during the month of December because the football ramps up so much in December. It's uh, in it's January, bad. like January yeah. is yeah, yeah. yeah. That first going. round's on my birthday, guys. Whew. Very there exciting. You go. That's your birthday yeah. gift. That's what you can ask for your birthday. Don't yeah. <laughs> Carolina playoff yeah. periods. Carolina is the yeah, eleventh seed. Please, I am begging. Max Johnson, lead us. All right, we we can move on. <laughs> All right, let's do college pl- playoff predictions. Let's do our one through four. We'll go one by one through one through four, and then we'll talk about our five through twelves. So I'll start off number one. Or let's go four to one. Four. Okay, I have good. I have Oklahoma State winning the Big Twelve. Like I said in the conference preview, I have Oklahoma State winning the Big Twelve title game. So I think they're going to be the four seed, Dylan. Uh, I went Iowa State, and this was the team that I picked to win the Big 12 in our Big 12 preview. The defense is there, uh, and, and I like this team to do well in a Big 10 conference that is not known for their defense. Well, I also think that the Big 12 is always going to be that fourth team. Yes. Yeah, I think that's really? more I, than fair. I, I disagree. You think it's the I think the AC, they love boning the ACC. I've got Miami as the number four seed here with the ACC okay. champion. I think the committee, any chance they get to say the ACC is a rung below these other conferences, they're going to take it. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I have NC State at three. 
See, wow. I disagree I, with that. I think if NC State makes it, they'll be they'll have two or three losses and still win the ACC title. But that'll put them as the four seed if they, if they make it. But I also think Oklahoma State's going to have two losses, and I think those Big Twelve losses are going to look worse than the ACC losses that NC State has. Really? Okay, that's yeah. fair. Actually, okay. I, I think I, you could flip flop either one, but I also think they both lose in the first round in the playoff if they're uh, <laughs> in that same spot. So we'll get there. But anyhow, Dylan. I went Miami for number three. Uh, I think that when you look at the other two that I have, there's no way Miami's going to have a better record than them. Uh, but I do think that they'll be better than Iowa State. Yeah, I agree. And I think we roughly have the same one, two, five. Yeah, um, prob- probably not. But this, we'll see. Number two, I have Georgia. Oh, whoa. Hello. Whoa! Oh, I thought Connor. Said, hold on. Yeah. Oh, you didn't. My bad. Wow. <laughs> Dylan, yeah, Miami, yeah. Four. Yeah, I Miami, Miami four. I missed one preview. I missed one preview. Come back on yeah, here. I'll go, I'll go to the penalty box. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> third seed. I've got Oklahoma State winning the Big Twelve. I, I I see what you're saying with the Big Twelve losses, but I just think they this committee, unless they show me something different, I think they value the Big Twelve a little bit more than the ACC, just conference wise. And I feel like I feel like Miami might have a loss in there that looks a lot worse than any Big 12 I, loss. I almost feel like Miami, though, with their national brand, they would get pushed ahead of Oklahoma State. That's but a good I point. I can see your That's argument fair. to NC State getting pushed back because yeah. of the Big 12 ACC. Thing. That's a good so, point. Okay. Yeah, but either way, I mean, it's your predictions, and we're all going to be maybe, wrong. So who maybe, I'm glad I was allowed <laughs> to give them. Yeah, thanks. Maybe we let Connor, Connor start with number two this time, make him feel a little better. <laughs> yeah, here you go, Connor. All right, number two. Two and one. Oh, why not that? Two and one? All right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll give it away. Uh, two, I've got Oregon. Big Ten champ, and then number two, um, number one, I've got Georgia, SEC champ. Okay. I think whoever wins the SEC, unless they somehow everybody has two losses, I think the SEC champ probably gets the number one seed. I don't know. I th- I, will, mm, I think the Big Ten champ gets it because I think Ohio State, Oregon are only going to have one loss. I think there's a likely chance that almost every SEC team in this playoff has two losses. Really? Who's Georgia losing to? They have a hard schedule. They got to play. Who did, who did we say? Let me pull they the schedule play again. At Texas. They got to play okay. Tennessee. They got to play. They've Canada. got Clemson at Clemson. Texas at Old Miss versus Tennessee. Maybe you're right. Actually, that's a tough schedule. I missed the SEC preview. That's that's a oh, that's, that's right. a good point. <laughs> that's true. Okay. That's true. Okay, I was wondering. I was like, huh. uh, Connor, Anyhow. did you have Oregon winning the Big Ten in your preview? I did. Okay. All right. For yeah. some reason, I thought you had Ohio State. I must have mixed it up no. with the two two buffoons. No, I have Oregon. Yeah, okay. I had Ohio, I had Ohio State. <laughs> I have okay. Ohio State. I have Ohio State one because I think Ohio State's only going to have one loss, and I think they're going to have the best record on paper. Now, if they have the same record as Georgia, I think Georgia gets that edge, obviously, because a tougher schedule, and they're going to always favor the SEC. But I think Oregon or Ohio State's going to get the uh, number one overall seed. Dylan, I went to Georgia. Uh, their schedule just overall compared to my number one pick, it's it's difficult. You have those games in there that they could easily drop. And uh, number one, I have Oregon, who could very easily go undefeated. Uh, and that's why I have them at number one. Okay. And then give your five pick then, because I think, oh, go ahead, Connor. You have well, real quick on that. You guys are saying the stuff about Georgia and the tough schedule. If Georgia has two losses and Oregon also has two losses, let's say Oregon loses to Ohio State in the regular season and then beats them in the title game. Doesn't SEC still get precedent if they're both no. two losses? No, because I don't think Oregon has another loss outside of or Oregon or Ohio State. I think that's their only loss in the but regular let, season. Let's say Oregon loses to Ohio State and Michigan. Let's say they drop both those then games. Georgia would be ahead. Okay, so the SEC losses would probably look better. Yes, 100%, because I think, okay. I think the Big Ten champ is only going to have one loss. But I okay. think the argument is that Oregon won't lose two, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, okay. argument, is, the argument is I have Ohio State, you guys have Oregon. I think, or vice versa, whatever. I think the number one seed's only going to have one loss. My yeah. argument is that Georgia will only have one loss. I think Georgia or Oregon okay. will both have one okay. loss. Yeah. So that's why I put Georgia number one. And if they're tied on record, I think Georgia will get that. We'll get the nod ahead, of course. Um, number five. This is an interesting pick for everyone. Um, Dylan, I'll start with you. Who do you have at five? Just I have missing Penn, the buy. I have Penn State, and we talked about this Penn State team Ooh. being one of the biggest benefactors of the expanded playoff. They get Ohio State at Penn State, which I think is huge. If they could knock off Ohio State, that'll do wonders for them. So I have Penn mm. State at five. Mm, wow. I have the S- I, I wanted to put the SEC runner-up, be- but I'm going Oregon at five. I think it's going to be I've, the Big Ten runner-up that's going to be at five because I think their record's going to look great. And we'll talk about TV matchups in a second. I think the way the TV matchups shake out, I think Oregon at five makes a lot of sense. Connor. I have Ohio State at five. 
So I also have the Big Ten runner up at number five. I think if they 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 probably beat Oregon in the regular season, and then I have them losing in the title game, I still think that gets in the fifth seed. Because uh, uh, there's a real world. There's a world where Ohio State and Oregon are both eleven and one, and they only beat each other. Or twelve and yeah. one, I guess, would be Oregon. But there's a world where they only beat each other. So I've got Ohio State Big Ten runner up at number five. Okay, now Dylan, go through your remaining playoff teams six through twelve. Yes, we'll go rapid fire. Six Ole Miss, seven Tennessee, eight Utah, nine Florida State, ten Kansas State, eleven Michigan, twelve Boise State. Wow, Ew. there are some Ew. big snubs there. There's some big snubs there, Dylan. Big snubs. There, there. I think the casual football fan that just watches the transfer portal will say there's some big snubs there. Mm, mm. All right, Connor, six through twelve. All right, six. I've got Utah. Seven. I've oh. got Texas. Yep. Seven. I've got Texas. So the SEC runner up, not till the seventh spot. Ole Miss eight, Penn State nine, Tennessee ten, NC State eleven, Liberty twelve. Li- I don't hate Liberty. I li- yeah. I was kind of toying between Boise and Liberty for twelve. Yeah. So, I don't really know what to do, but I've heard a lot of hype around Liberty. I did mine solely based. I did my my five through twelve based on TV matchups more than anything because I feel like that's what it's going to turn into. So I have or uh, I have Oregon five, Texas six, Ole Miss seven, Penn State eight, Miami nine, Utah ten, Notre Dame eleven, Liberty twelve. Because think about those matchups: Oregon Liberty. You get the rematch of last year. Texas Notre Dame in Austin is going to be a phenomenal game, phenomenal TV, easy to sell to networks. Ole Miss Utah, I feel like they're the kind of the same tier a little bit, where it's like okay, kind of the same TV ratings style. I don't know how to put that, but anyhow, an eight nine Penn State Miami classic college football game. Yeah, Penn State is hosting a college football playoff game. They are going to make sure one hundred percent. Yep. And so Penn State versus Miami, that's going to be. Fantastic. I was flip flopping Penn State between eight and nine. So like if they're the eight seed, they'll host that game. I didn't know yeah. what to do there. Right now yeah. I have Ole Miss at eight and Penn State at nine, which I think would be another good game. I've also be got too. I had Tennessee in at number ten. That means Tennessee versus Texas battle of the UTs. Who's Ooh. the real UT? Ooh. Oh yeah, I like that. That's good. And then my bracket shook out where it's Liberty Ohio State, which I think would be an absolute shit stomping. And then <laughs> um, NC State Utah yeah, would be the last Liberty. game. I think NC State Utah would be the last game. I think that's like a pretty fun game where it's like. When else are we going to see NC State play a team like Utah? And a lot of these first-round matchups, I think, will give us those games where, man, these are two really high-profile schools that don't get to see each other often. It's going to be weird seeing them playing each other. And that's going to be the beauty of the playoff where we're going to find out if the ACC can compete with the SEC one year. We're going to find out if the Big Ten's better than the Big 12 one year. It's going to be awesome. And then we will all overreact to a one-game sample size of one of those matchups and be like, oh, you know, Pac-12 is better than the Big Ten, when we all know that's not true. (laughs) Yep, yep. Connor, give me your final four. Final four? Uh, This was tough. This was tough. I hated doing this to my ACC, my ACC faithful. But I've got Georgia, Ohio State, and Utah, Oregon as my final four. Hmm. Utah, okay, okay. This is exciting because I don't know Connor. Who I really don't know who you're going to have winning the national championship. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, that's part of the fun. I mean, so real quick, I had Ohio State beating Miami. I had Georgia beating Penn State. I had Utah upsetting Oklahoma State, and then I had Oregon beating Tennessee. That was my that was my quarterfinal. Is that an upset though, Utah Oklahoma State? Because that's probably going to be the Big Twelve game if you have that yeah. prediction. Like. That's why I'm saying if Oklahoma State takes the yeah. title game and they play again for whatever time in the playoff, I, feel I like think Utah, Utah pulls out. Sneaky, be favored in that game again. You're probably right. You're probably yeah. right. But yeah, final anyway, four: Ohio State, Georgia, Utah, Oregon. I love it, Dylan. Final four: I went Penn State, Oregon, and Miami, Georgia. I had Penn State beating Boise and Iowa State. Uh, Oregon beating Utah. What else do I got? Miami beating Michigan in the quarters, and Georgia beating Tennessee in the quarters. Dylan, we both got Tennessee in the quarterfinals. Love, love us, to see baby. that. Who'd you have them beating in the first round? Kansas State. I had them beating Texas. The Battle of UTs. Yeah. There we um, go. I know. There we go. I know. I Nico know. Heisman. Nico Heisman. Nico Heisman. Mom Nico got a Heisman. kick out of that, by the way. She was texting me after the show. A little foreshadowing. <laughs> shout, out, shout out Dylan's mom. And then she was like, I, I'm not throwing mom under the bus. I, thought, I just thought this was funny. She was like, what did you call Squirrel? And I said, that, that's his name. And she's like, no, you said something like with a B. I said, I said, uh, Belitnikov, he's going to be the best receiver. I wasn't <laughs> calling him that. I was, just, I was just saying he's going to win the award for the best receiver. So that was a good, good mother or not, yeah, mother son moment. I oh, love it. Good. I love it. 
All right, my final four. I have five seed Oregon, and they're going to be playing Ohio State in the final four. Mm, beautiful. And then I have Georgia as the two seed, and they're going to be playing Texas. We're going to see. Wow. Which, I when I shook out the bracket that way, I'm like, is it really going to be Big Ten, just the Big Ten title game and the ACC title game in the Final Four? Which I also think is what these these college football networks want too. They're like, yeah. So we're basically know, getting the same four team playoff we would yes. have anyway. <laughs> yeah, like, no, we can finally kidding. prove the ACC and Big yeah. Twelve are terrible. <laughs> yeah, that's but good. Anyhow, uh, my title game. I have Ohio State Georgia. It's lame. It's lame. I have Ohio State Georgia. Dylan and who wins? Who wins? Okay, all right. I got Oregon, Georgia. Oregon, Georgia. I don't hate it, Goner. I've also I've also got Oregon, Georgia. It's chalk. It's boring. It's lame. It, but it's what I feel. I feel like they're head and shoulders above a lot of these teams. Connor, we, title pick. Title pick. I flip flop back and forth, but my gut is telling me chalk, and I'm going Georgia over Oregon for the college football championship this year. It's the chalkiest that. play you can have. I feel and, slimy. You, you feel so I feel lame, gross. Don't you? Yeah, You're I feel putting, so lame. You, you're putting UConn in your bracket. You're just going UConn, UConn, yep. UConn, UConn. Like, I, I wanted to come out and have a sexy pick and be like, Penn State's making a run, James Franklin's here, or like, oh my God, Tennessee and Josh Heupel, and it's going to be awesome. No, George is winning the whole thing. It's boring. It's lame. Playoff will be awesome. It'll end, end with the same result that we would have gotten anyways. Yeah. Yeah, Dylan. Give me Oregon. Plus 750. I think they get it done. Their schedule is the perfect amount of easy and being able to test their strengths. I, I, I love what Oregon's doing. It's not going to be a TCU situation where they play an easy schedule and get blown out. They'll be tested. They'll win the tests and they'll win the national championship. Wow. Wow. So Dan Lanning, who hasn't won Jack, it's now time. Yep. This is the time. Wow. <laughs> wow. I've got the Ohio State Buckeyes winning the oh, national title. Bill. What a oh, loser. What a anti-Dillard. loser. Anti-Dillard. I you go know, Michigan Dillard. last year. I was a oh, Michigan, my god! I was a Michigan man last year. I rode Michigan to the bitter end. I was there in August. I said, this Michigan team, Harbaugh, these guys, they're winning the national title. They win the national title. Ohio State's out for blood. They're coming out for revenge. It's Ohio State against the world this year. I've got Ryan Day and Ohio State lifting the title. They're going to win the college football playoff. Won't even make the playoff. Nine and three. <laughs> Anti Dylan <laughs> rhetoric on the show. That's what it is, right? It's Starting really early. not. It's really not. It's it's just it's just the facts. You know, I can't. You can't hate the facts. The you facts. Know? facts. So facts I, I have don't a care question. about your feelings, Dylan. Facts do not care about your feelings. <laughs> yeah. Before right. we get in snubs, Dylan, you have Michigan in. What do you have their record? You think they're what ten and two getting in? Yeah. 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 Mm, I Can disagree. I, I think something? they beat Ohio State. Ryan Day can't beat us. I'm going to say I don't think there's a single 9 and 3 team that makes the playoff this year. You don't think so? I don't think you can make the playoff at 9 and 3 this year. I think, I think there's a decent chance go 10 and 2. If there's a fourth SEC team like Tennessee, I think there's a decent chance they'll be 9 and 3. I think they're they like you have, one 9 and 3 team. They have to have some ridiculous wins on that resume though where they beat yeah. Georgia or they cuz yeah. I think a team that's 9 and 3 where they lose to the top 3 teams in their conference I don't think that team deserves to get in, nor do I think they will, because I think the runner-up in the ACC or the runner-up in the Big 12 will take that spot. Or Notre Dame, for example, which we haven't well, even talked about at all. I was going to say, so if Tennessee's 9-3 and three and they've got three really good losses to SEC teams, but then Notre Dame has a cakewalk of their schedule and they're 10-2, and two, you think Notre Dame gets in? Only because they're Notre Dame. Okay. All right. And they want I'm Notre with Dame you. In. That's fair. You want to talk about snubs? Yeah, let's do snubs. Let's do snubs real quick. Connor. Uh, my snubs, the first one everybody's going to flip out over is Alabama. I mean, I've yeah. seen so many brackets with people just penciling Alabama into a top six, top seven seed. I haven't seen a lot of them as the SEC champs, which which good. But I see a lot of brackets just automatically having them in, like, no doubt. I feel confident about this. I think Alabama's 9-3. and three. I think they lose to Georgia. I think they drop one at Tennessee. And then either Missouri, LSU, or Oklahoma, they're all in the top 16. One of those is a loss. That's 9-3 and three right there. There's potential for Bama if it really goes off the rails to be eight and four. I, I really mm-hmm. do think that. I don't. I don't necessarily believe that will happen, but it wouldn't shock me if they go eight and four. Would not shock me. I think my, one of my biggest snubs, and I think this is going to be a big controversy, is I think Notre Dame sneaks in over Missouri. I know it's a lame one, but I think no, Missouri is going to be ten and two. And let's say Notre Dame's eleven and one with a loss against A and M or something, or even ten and two. 
Notre Dame with that name brand recognition is going to get in over Missouri. And there's going to yeah. be a lot. Missouri might even have better wins. They might have a better resume. But I still think Notre Dame's just going to get that slight nod over them just because they're Notre Dame. Yeah, my my biggest snub, obviously, is Ohio State. And we talked about it on the Big Ten preview. Uh, Kishon, Qu- Kinshawn Judkins or whatever. Room, the, it was pretty obvious in his time at Ole Miss. There were times he O-line wasn't helping him up. They, maybe a locker room issue there. Will Howard, we've talked about being more of a lateral move. Rumors are out of camp. He, I don't think he was at Big Ten preview days or uh, Big Ten media days. Lost like 30 pounds in the offseason. And not like a cut getting stronger 30 pounds like sickly lost 30 pounds so or, like playing playing into the football for five straight weeks without eating type of way yeah exactly yeah that's the only way you can win a national championship so <laughs> oh, there it's, it is i i'm not you know you can win the transfer portal you can have you can win your championships in june and july but you got to play the games in october and november and so this isn't be a bit. in january this isn't a bit dylan you fully believe they're they're gonna get snubbed out of the playoff or they're not make you, it you saw the bet slip plus 440 okay that should be plus 800 another Another snub I had, um, LSU, I've seen on a lot of people's card. Uh, I feel like they'll be 9-3, 8-4. I don't, I don't see them getting in. Florida State was another one. Uh, Dylan, I think you had them in, but I don't see it with DJU this year. I, I mean, they'll be fine. I'm sure they'll have eight or nine wins, but the two ACC teams I have in are Miami and NC State, for reasons we've already said. And then my last snub was Notre Dame. I feel like the schedule is like pretty easy, but I also don't trust a lot of these Notre Dame pieces to where they, they could drop one to one of these like unknown teams, like one of these yeah, lower-ranked cool teams that we don't really feel strongly about and they don't get in at 10 and two or nine and three or whatever it is. So those are my major snubs right there. Okay. I love it. Uh, real quick. We'll do a Heisman and then just a little, we'll touch on a little week zero, touch on a little week zero quick. Oh boy. But a uh, Heisman pick quick fire, Dylan. Jalen Milrow. I had all of these notes written out. He's uh 14 to one. I think at FanDuel as low as eight to one at Caesars. Some of the important things to know, obviously he elevates his game with being able to run the ball and, I think that's what we're going to have to focus on to get this home. And then the passing is an addition to that, right? A top, a top of qualifying quarterbacks in terms of big time, in terms of big time throws, we've seen him be able to make the throws. He led the league in a dot last year. And then Kalen DeBoer looking at last year, very rarely takes the starting quarterback out when they're playing like no names. So uh, it was 40 attempts for Penix in a 56-19 game against Boise, 38 attempts in a 43-10 win against Tulsa, 35 attempts in a 41-7 win against Michigan State, and 25 attempts in a 59-32 win against Cal. That's going to be huge because you know right when the Heisman debate is starting to ramp up, you're going to have that game against Furman or whoever it is, the second to last week, third to last week of the season. Uh, And if Jalen plays most of that game, that might be the exclamation point. So I'm going Jalen Milrow. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I just don't like Alabama as much this year, and I, I want to see if they pick the best player on the best team kind of thing. I don't, which, I don't think that matters anymore. I think they proved to us with Daniels that it doesn't have to be the best player on the best team. I think, I think that's true, but I think it was also somewhat of a down year for the Heisman a little bit. I think the competition wasn't as great against Daniels, but Daniels deserved it. I'm not saying Daniels I, didn't deserve it. Because I also want to say real quick, I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're good. The game... Milro will have opportunities to be on the biggest stage and prove himself like a good game against Georgia, a good game at Neyland against Tennessee, a good game against Missouri, a good game against LSU, even a good game against Oklahoma. Like those yeah. are going to be huge games that everybody's going to be watching. He will have plenty of opportunities to prove himself. And I think the ceilings there. I love it. I love it. I've placed two Heisman bets. I've placed Jackson Dart and Cam Ward. Mm. So I'm going to go with Cam Ward because Ben's pick was Jackson Dart, as you'll see on the graphics on social media. Uh, I am going to go with Cam Ward. I think Cam Ward just completely changes Miami. If you believe Miami is back and the U is back, you have to fully believe in Cam Ward. Yeah. So I'm going with Cam Ward to win the Heisman, Connor. We said it on the ATC preview, Carter. <laughs> I don't want to just, just put the same thing as you, but I, I do feel strongly about Cam Ward as the Heisman this year. I got it 22-1 to 1 on ESPN. You look at Miami's schedule – there's going to be so many opportunities for him to put up numbers. We talked about Washington State last year, not being able to protect him. Bad O-line. He was constantly running for his life. Miami O-line is miles better than that team last year. Miami schedule, Florida A.M., Ball State, USF to start the year after Florida. Those are some really big stat potential number games. Then we talk about the ACC, VT, Cal, Louisville, Duke, Georgia Tech, Wake, Syracuse, bad defenses all around that he can put up real numbers on. If Miami's 10-2, and 11-1, and he's leading the college football in passing yards or rushing touchdowns or something crazy like that, 22-1 to 1 is too high of a number for Cam Ward. So that, that's my pick. 
Also sprinkled uh, sprinkled Cam Rising plus four thousand just in case Utah's mm. all the way back. Mm. Just in case they're all the way back. And then the the chalk picks Dylan Gabriel plus seven hundred. I like Oregon to make the title game, so he's the favorite for a reason. But Lanny I'm going, Lanny made Nixon star. Ward. Yeah, yeah I'm going Cam Ward for the pick star. though. Yeah. Um. All right. Real quick, we'll close up here. Week zero, college football is finally back. Just think about this phrase. We're recording right now, Wednesday, August 21st. Think about this phrase. We have college football this Saturday. Kind of weird mm, to think about. I love it. Like, oh, have, I love it. Oh, oh, I have to watch Florida State, Georgia Tech in Dublin this Saturday. Oh, shoot. Shout out Cole on Twitter, by the way. This is a question. This is a, this, I'm asking this question solely for him. Is Florida State on upset watch against Georgia Tech on Saturday? Wouldn't be crazy. Wouldn't be crazy. I'm going to tread lightly here. I think it'll be a close game. I think it'll be a lot closer than people realize. But I think Florida State pulls out a scare. I think it's like, oh my God, DJU and Florida State almost lost to Georgia Tech in week zero, but they pull it out like 31 to 28 or something like that. I think I think Georgia Tech's going to have the ball with a chance to tie or take the lead and like turn it over on downs or something. But I think that game's going to be close throughout. I think it's going to be closer than the spreads indicating. I think the spreads at eleven right now. I kind of yeah. like that to stay within t- uh, ten points. I think it's going to be one of those. We're sitting there at halftime. You're like, ooh, thirteen to ten. What's going on with Florida State right now? This is a little upset. Watch yeah, DJ used six for seventeen already in the first half. Florida State's going to win that game. Their defense is going to be too good. They're going to overpower yeah. Georgia Tech. But I cannot wait for that SMU Nevada. I'm curious to see. You know, new ACC team, SMU, Hawaii, Delaware State. I swore off Hawaii. I won't bet Hawaii. Well, no, can, can I entice I the, you? I know the plain thing. I okay. Plain all right. Thing. All right. I'm, all right. I'm still st- staying away. I don't know it. Real quick. Oh, the plain thing. They got they they missed their flight out of JFK <laughs> and got basically got delayed by an entire day to get to Hawaii. Something about the bus ride. Like the bus yeah, ride, they didn't catch the bus or something like the that. Bus. Miss- <laughs> so their parents had to drive them yes they, they, missed, yeah. they missed the bus and they had to go back to their parents like i need a ride to school literally oh my god they need okay. a ride to honolulu if i'm i'll be awake during that time i will be betting that game i say i won't <laughs> there will be some kind of action on that game just because i'm fiending for action just because that's how i am that's how i yeah, am yeah we'll find out we'll find out i have an early it's, flight on sunday we, so I might, I might be able to miss it it's a bit of a warm up week zero. Uh, Got to go Dublin under, Dublin under. Got to go I'm with, with it. you. And then we got to go SMU. We're late to the game, but I think SMU blows out this Nevada team. It's an early chance for them to prove they belong in a big time conference. Dylan, I'm with you on the under. I love the under in Dublin. Love it. I the was dub- thinking the same thing. Dublin under. Double under. All right. Double anyhow, that's it from us. We'll uh, make sure to check out all the NFL previews. All the AFC previews will be out this week. NFC next week. Uh, all the college football conference previews are out. Go check them out. Great episodes. We'll be back all season long doing college football previews, live recaps. We'll do. We'll put out the schedule and everything next week. What we're going to do for the whole season, and then NFL previews. It's a lot. We got football. Football's fully it's back. back now. It's fully, fully. Back. Turn the fire hose on. You're getting pelted in the face with football content, but that's how we like it pause anyhow yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 quote that quote that card seat geek download the seat geek app and use code carter cast at seat geek for 20 dollars off your first purchase make sure to follow us all on twitter all in the episode description below at CarterCast on everything like subscribe rate review we'll see y'all next time bye